Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about one more problem from the lead code top interview problems I've been working on. So there's a particular playlist and all the problems will be in the playlist. So the description of this playlist will be in the description of this video. So go check it out. And uh, the next problem that, that we're going to discuss is power of three. So the problem statement gives that you are given an integer n return true if it is a power of three else return false. So that's all the problem. Now how you can check it out. There are no multiple ways to solve this problem out. But what you can see here is that whatever number you have, if it is a power of three, let's say it, it is three to the power of 15. Okay. Then you can continuously divide this number by three because let's say it is a, it says nine. So you can divide this number by three. So it will become three. Then you can again divide it by three. So it will become one. So you will keep on dividing this number until it becomes like, uh, it becomes equal to uh, a factor of like three in the end. So if it becomes equal to like one in the end, it is obviously a factor of three. So how you can like keep on doing this, you can just take this number and divide it by three. Now you might be thinking that, okay, it might take a lot of time, but it will not take a lot of time because see, even if you have a very large number that, that is three to the power hundred, obviously it, that will not be a number because that will not be stored. You can see that the constraints is up till two power 31. So in three, it will be obviously less than that. So, but it will not be too much. But what you can see is that even if it's a very large number, three, and three to the power hundred, to get from this state to one, you will only require hundred steps. Why? Because in every step you divide this number by three. So it's like exponentially decreasing out because like three and divided by three, so divided by three. So first it will be like three to the power hundred. When you divide by three, it will become three to the power ninety-nine, then three to the power ninety-eight and so on. And in hundred steps, it, it, it will come down to one. So it is a very small number of steps required to bring a very large number down to one. So even if you have a very like because even according to the constraints also, it will not take much time. So what you can directly do is that you just have a number, let's say n, and you keep on dividing by three. If it is reduced by three, then you can keep on dividing by three. It's no problem. If it is not reduced by three at any point of time, and uh, the answer in the end does, doesn't turns out to be one because in the end, keep on dividing by three, the answer should in the end turns out to be one because let's say if you have nine, you could keep on dividing by three, it becomes three and again divided by three, it becomes one. So if the answer in the end becomes out to be one, the answer is fine. That is power of three as the answer is that it's not power three. So that is some of the other cases. So as you can see that if n is equal to zero or n is less than zero, then the answer is false because yeah, these are the constraints as well. Okay. Because it's negative number. So a negative number cannot power of three because, uh, yeah, it's a negative number. So if n equal to one, which means that it is only one. So answer is one because three to the power of zero. So n equal to one can also be so three to the power of zero is one. So that is also a valid answer. Else what I'll do is that for whatever n I have, we keep on checking that whether n is a power of like, uh, if n mod three is equal to zero, which means that it is divided by zero, that divided by three, then, then we keep on dividing it by three. Else at any point of time, we find out that it is not divided by three, then, then we just return false because, and if this particularly like divide completely and in the end we become one, so the answer is true. That's the overall logic. Uh, so it's just exponential decreasing by like uh, whatever number it has. So it, uh, so it will be like log of n. Okay, so log base three of n, whatever number we have, that's a time complexity and space complexity. We are not doing anything. So that's our logic and code part for this problem. So thank you for watching the video till the end. I will see you next one. Keep coding and bye.